Nathan Burke, it's great to have you here with us. You know, you're a bodybuilder, you, you're an evangelizer, you, you love communicating the faith. Before we get into what you do uh, evangelizing through bodybuilding, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and your spiritual journey? All right, well, first of all, thanks for having me. It's like a blessing and a truly honor to be here. Um, what got me in the journey is I'm from Canton, Ohio, mm -hmm. and what got me was, was start with my father. Mm -hmm. My father was really into lifting weights, and my mom actually was really into like the nutrition component mm -hmm. of it. She would always make sure me and my siblings had you know, our, our breakfast, lunch, dinner, just everything mm -hmm. was pretty healthy, mm -hmm. and that kind of ingrained into my mind about like healthy eating and things like that, and then I always saw my dad as a handyman, mm -hmm. and he... I always see him work on projects, and as he was working on projects, I would always see like his arms were like muscular, and I was yeah. like, man, that's really fascinating. And I just really showed what strength is, just seeing like through my dad's work mm -hmm. and like that. So I basically just fell in love with um, just fitness at such a young age, mm -hmm. and then my dad got me involved in athletics. I played um, baseball, I played mm -hmm. football, and I always had a workout component with that. Mm -hmm. And my dad guided me along the way, and then, um, I just fell in love with fitness along mm -hmm. with my brother and sister mm -hmm. and we always worked out together and we just really grew in that in that lifestyle mm -hmm. of being healthy and so it parlayed into my athletics and then mm -hmm. once I was done with um, high school I started to get into the sport of bodybuilding mm -hmm. and like hey, what can I do now I'm like done with baseball and football I've graduated it's like let's uh, let's get into some bodybuilding mm -hmm. now I started discovering the sport of it right. and then I've always learned about um, natural bodybuilding. Like I didn't really know much about natural bodybuilding. When I was younger, mm -hmm. I thought, okay, if you did bodybuilding, you had to take like performance enhancing drugs, mm -hmm. steroids. But for me, I um, just always wanted to stay mm -hmm. um, natural. You right. know, I just wanted to do it that way. My dad mm -hmm. taught me that way. He's like, just always work hard just through, through diet, mm -hmm. through um, training hard. So I did that. And then I did my first bodybuilding show mm -hmm. in 2005 okay. um, at the age of 21. And from there, I've done a total of uh, 14 shows. Wow. And this past year, I became a pro natural bodybuilder right. uh, this past June. Congratulations. I, thank you. <laughs> and I did my first pro show September 30th in Florida. Wow. So. Well, that's amazing. Yeah. Uh, you know. And so you know, along the way, you've had some setbacks, some, some difficulties, a health problem. Tell us about that. Yeah, so in 2008, mm -hmm. I was diagnosed with the uh, inflammatory bowel disease, uh, mm -hmm. ulcerative colitis, right. and I was able to get it treated mm -hmm. with um, uh, meds for four years, and then the early part of 2012, I, my meds stopped working. I started mm -hmm. getting really, really sick, right. and I was taken to the hospital, like mm -hmm. my meds weren't working, I'm like, what's going mm -hmm. on? So they tried to treat me in the hospital. Mm -hmm. And for the first like couple weeks I was in there, um, they just were treating me and things were okay. But then I just t took a major, major setback to mm -hmm. where nothing was working in the hospital either. Right. And so what happened was they told me, okay, if in order for you to get on with your life and to, and to recover, we're just gonna have to remove the entire large intestine. Mm -hmm. And without hesitation, I said, okay, because at this point, I couldn't eat. I, w I didn't eat for a month. Mm. Um, I, I was barely drinking. I was getting really dehydrated. Mm -hmm. And so I agreed to have the surgery. So in, in April of 2012, mm -hmm. I had my entire large intestine removed. Oh, nice. And um, there was a three-step surgery. Mm -hmm. And then December of the same year, I had uh, what they call an ostomy. Mm -hmm. um, they, they call it J-pouch, mm -hmm. which is um, they take one end of my small mm -hmm. intestine and put it on the other end and right. form, it's like my new, my new colon basically. Mm -hmm. And then my final surgery was in March of 2013. Mm -hmm. And then, but from there, it got my life back and I was able to make a full recovery mm -hmm. and get back into fitness and get that right back into bodybuilding. So, wow. Yeah. And so what, what was your prayer at this time? What, what, what were you, uh, you know, what was, what was in your mind with God and what was he doing or what did you think was going on? Yeah, so when I was in the hospital, there was not one moment mm -hmm. where I was like, God, why? Like, like, why are you, is this happening? I, I, I asked why, but not mm -hmm. in a why of being like, so, I must have done something wrong, you mm -hmm. know, or, or why is this happening? I shouldn't be suffering like this. I'm more or less asked like, okay, I'm in here. Um, I'm not eating. Mm -hmm. um, I'm suffering. Mm -hmm. But I found out how am I going to use this suffering? Mm -hmm. I know that this is, there's going to be a greater good that's going to come from this. Mm -hmm. 
And basically, I learned a lot from our very own Mother Angelica. Mm -hmm. I learned a lot from her. She talked about the gift of suffering mm -hmm. and that you can use that suffering and offer it up. Mm -hmm. And so when I was in the hospital, mm -hmm. instead of just laying there and being bitter, I would be like, God, who can I offer this up for today? You mm -hmm. know, and I just united my suffering with the cross. Mm -hmm. And basically what, what that did was it, it made me to like take my myself out of, mm -hmm. out of me and stop thinking about myself, mm -hmm. allow me to think about the cross and the passion and mm -hmm. what he went through. And I thought about all the others that suffered yeah. and that we can use this suffering mm -hmm. and, and not just let it go to waste because it is a truly a gift. Amen. So when I was in there, I mm -hmm. was just, um, people would look at me. Mm -hmm. I would have people come in like, why are you so calm? You know, and I would just tell them, you know, I'm, I'm just, because I'm, I'm, I'm offering this up, mm -hmm. um, I'm not, you know, I'm not using this as a, a gateway to be like, okay, this is this is not how who I am. This is mm -hmm. what I'm supposed to be is is a, a, it's like a soldier, a true mm -hmm. disciple, and so that just allowed me to tell others about right. why I'm there, you know, and not just not just lay there in self pity, you know. Mm -hmm. So, so you know, you're a man who who's after God's own heart. You know, God is in every area of your life. You know, that, that's very obvious about what you, what you just shared with us now. And so you know, we're going to be going off to a break. But when we get back, we're going to ask you how you bring God, how you evangelize through bodybuilding. Great. Thank you.